In late January, five members belonging to an experts panel of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority reached a grave, unanimous decision. A fault running under a reactor at the Tsuruga nuclear plant is likely to be active. It's the first time such a major decision has been made and it could force the plant to close. We made the assessment from a safety point of view. Others responded quickly. The electric power industry said the decision was made in haste. We don't think the panel offered enough scientific or technical proof. Despite the expert's assessment, the plant operator has conducted its own geological survey and is intent on restarting the reactor. These developments are unprecedented in the history of Japan's nuclear power generation. Today, we'll look at the background and repercussions. Hello, welcome to today's close-up. I'm Hiroko Kunia. Last September, the government launched the Nuclear Regulation Authority, pledging not to forget the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident in 2011. The authority's job is to protect people's health, property, and environment, and shut out the influence of the pro-nuclear community. Its first test is surveys on faults running under six nuclear plants, including Tsuruga plant, to assess the safety of the sites. Under the law, nuclear reactors sitting on active faults are deemed not fit for operation. The authority defines active faults as ones that moved between 120,000 and 130,000 years ago or later. In late January, a panel advising the authority concluded that a fault directly under the number two reactor at the Tsuruga plant is highly likely to be active. How is the authority going to decide on the safety of the Tsuruga plant based on the panel's conclusion? If it tells the plant not to resume operations, it would be the first such case since the authority was launched. With such a scenario becoming increasingly likely, attention is now shifting to who would pay the enormous decommissioning costs and how radioactive waste from the plant should be dealt with. The government would be asked to work with all stakeholders to come up with an agreement. First. Let's look at how the panel played it safe and unanimously decided that the fault under the Tsuruga plant is active. The Tsuruga nuclear plant in Fukui prefecture is run by the Japan Atomic Power Company. Beneath the number two reactor runs a fault named D1. Could this fault move again in the future? Since the ground below the reactor cannot be dug up, a survey was conducted over an extended section. There, experts focused on whether the fault existed in layers formed within the most recent benchmark period of 120,000 to 130,000 years. Faults are dislocations of ground layers caused by earthquakes. If a dislocation does not extend to layers from the benchmark period, the fault is deemed non-active. But if it extends to layers formed within the benchmark period, it's considered seismically active because of the possibility that it could move again. This is the fault found in the survey. A closer look showed that it doesn't extend to layers newer than 130,000 years, so it was considered non-active. But a further survey 
revealed another fault nearby. As this one extended to relatively new layers, the experts determined that it was an active fault. So then, which of the two faults is connected to D1? Japan Atomic Power argued that it's the non-active fault, and therefore D1 is also not active. The experts, on the other hand, determined that the active fault is likely connected to D1, and concluded that D1 was most probably an active fault. How did the experts reach this conclusion? One of them, Hiroyuki Tsutsumi, says the decision reflects the regulation authority's policy of putting safety first. As long as there's a possibility, we will make judgments from a safety point of view. Japan Atomic Power, however, maintains that the experts have only pointed to the possibility that D1 is active and that their studies are not conclusive. They've only looked at limited areas and we believe their stance is not very scientific. Japan Atomic Power is now staging an additional survey to show that the D1 fault is not active. It plans to submit the results to the regulation authority by the end of February. But one of the experts, Yasuhiro Suzuki, says their assessment won't change unless the plant operator offers conclusive data to prove that D1 is not active. If something cannot be ruled out, it must be factored in. That's the basic rule. Japan Atomic Power must prove, beyond a doubt, that the fault is not active. The experts met in late January without waiting for the plant operator's additional survey. They unanimously agreed that the D1 fault is highly likely to be active. Behind this move lies a long-running failure by government nuclear regulators to put safety first in making decisions. In fact, experts had begun pointing out more than 20 years ago that the Tsuruga nuclear complex was sitting on an active fault, different from D1. Many geological experts concurred that the Urasoko fault was active. Unlike D1, Urasoko does not run beneath the reactor buildings. Therefore, its existence would not automatically stop the Tsuruga plant from running. But the operator would still be required to reinforce buildings and pipes and take various other measures. Japan Atomic Power, however, did not acknowledge that the Urasoko fault was active. Nor did government regulators ask the company to carry out a geological survey. Only after repeated urgings by the experts did the government order a survey of the fault in 2005. It took another three years for Japan Atomic Power to stage that survey and acknowledge the fault as active. Studies on whether the fault poses a safety risk still continue. All the while, for 20 years, the Tsuruga nuclear plant remained up and running.
Takashi Nakata is one of the experts who pointed out that the Urasoko fault was active. If there's a chance that a fault is active, it's only natural to assume that it is and establish safety measures. I hope this principle will be upheld so decisions can be made from the viewpoint of safety. The chief of the Nuclear Regulation Authority says he will do away with old habits and always judge from a safety point of view. We will never again allow the occurrence of any incident that would endanger people's lives and the environment. We will establish an entirely new regulatory system that draws a clear line with past practices. With us in the studio is Koichi Kitazawa, chairperson of the Private Sector Commission on the Fukushima Nuclear Accident, and NHK reporter Hajime Okada. Mr. Kitazawa, how do you see the expert panel's report on the Tsuruga nuclear plant based on your experience as a chairperson of the investigative commission? You must be well acquainted with the closed nature of the government sector and the utilities involved in the nuclear power business. First, in September last year, the system changed thoroughly. Before that, the regulatory body used to put pro-nuclear power concerns first, even when dealing with safety control issues. However, the Nuclear Regulation Authority, or NRA, launched last September is different. The law, which set up the authority, states that it's the authority's duty to protect the life, health, properties, and environment of Japanese citizens without any consideration towards the pro-nuclear camp. Furthermore, it prohibits a revolving door practice of officials going back and forth between the regulatory body and the government sector promoting nuclear power. The positions of the authority members are also guaranteed by the Diet. Members can make judgments on safety based solely on their pride as experts and their expert knowledge. They are protected by the law so they can act that way. I think this has enabled them to turn in a report like that for the first time ever. So the change in the regulator's status led to the new policy to say no to nuclear plants if there is a potential safety hazard, even if the chance is small? Yes. Before utilities could keep nuclear reactors running if there was no proof that the reactors were unsafe, but the NRA will not let utilities operate the reactors unless it's convinced that there is no danger. There is a big difference between how it works and how it used to work. Mr. Okada, what will be the NRA's next move? It will hear other experts' opinions on the report and then make its final judgment on whether the number two reactor of the Tsuruga nuclear power plant can be restarted. The authorities' expert panel has also conducted an on-site survey at the Higashidori nuclear power plant in Aomori Prefecture and says a fault under that plant could be active as well. The OI plant is the only one currently operating in Japan, and experts are divided whether the fault below is active. They'll survey the Shika plant in Ishikawa Prefecture and the Mihama plant and the Monju Fast Breeder Reactor, both in Fukui Prefecture. I have a question about the definition of active fault. The panel defines it as a fault that has moved over the past 120,000 to 130,000 years or later. But under new safety standards to be finalized in July, the panel takes a tougher stance. It says if experts cannot say exactly when a fault moved, it might apply a stricter definition and conduct a thorough survey. How will the new standards affect existing nuclear power plants? In a word, it will be more difficult for the utilities to restart suspended nuclear reactors. The power companies are to check if the reactors conform to the new safety standards that will be introduced in July, then the NRA will see if the utilities assessment is appropriate. However, the utilities will have to carry out major repair work to make existing reactors, especially the old ones, conform to the new standards. It will take a lot of money and time. Some reactors may not be able to restart. Some may have to be scrapped. The nuclear power industry in Japan is at a turning point 
now that the regulatory body has shifted its stance to study everything from a safety point of view. Now that some nuclear reactors may not be able to restart or may even be scrapped, a new question has come to light. Who is going to shoulder the cost of scrapping them? In January, a public hearing was held concerning a planned rate hike by Kansai Electric Power Company. Many residents at the hearing were against the rate hike. The debate focused more on the Tsuruga plant and its operator, Japan Atomic Power Company, than on Kansai Electric. Experts say a fault under uh, the reactor at Tsuruga is likely to be active. The reactor is offline and nobody knows if it will ever reopen. What does Kansai Electric keep paying for? The utility pays Japan Atomic Power for an electricity supply from the Tsuruga plant. But even after the operation at the plant was suspended, it has been continuing to pay for power. Japan Atomic Power is not generating any power. Paying them is ridiculous. I'm against the rate hike. Don't pass the rising cost to consumers without a good explanation. A financial report by Japan Atomic Power shows no electricity generation between last April and September. But the utility posted power generation revenues of 75.7 billion yen or 820 million dollars. Over 20 percent of the total was paid by Kansai Electric. A Kansai Electric official explained that the nuclear power operator must receive payments given the enormous cost of building nuclear facilities. We believe we owe Japan atomic power payments under our contract in the sense that we are in the same boat. This shows a breakdown of the wholesale prices of nuclear power. The base charge includes construction and maintenance costs. Buyers pay the base charge under yearly contracts. Compared to the base charge for thermal power, the proportion for nuclear power is much larger. Buyers do not have to pay fuel costs when the plant is down, but that's not the case for the base charge. Nuclear power facilities require maintenance to ensure safety even when they are not operating. The operator cannot do the work if we don't pay for that. Part of the constant running cost is eventually passed on to consumers in the form of electricity bills. University of Tokyo professor Toshihiro Matsumura studies utility tariff systems. He says under the current system, consumers have no choice but to pay their share of the base charge. The costs of conducting surveys and taking safety measures at the Tsuruga plant are regarded as fixed costs. Under the current tariff system, these fixed costs will go into the base charge, which will eventually be shouldered by consumers. But Matsumura is not endorsing the current system. Here's why. The Nuclear Regulation Authority can say a certain reactor is not fit for operation. But it cannot force the operator to decommission it. Even when the operator holds back the decision to scrap the reactor for an extended period, the base charge will have to be paid all that time. The system should be revised in the long run, so consumers should not always have to shoulder unreasonable costs. 
The nuclear authority says it will make a swift judgment that puts safety first when assessing the safety of nuclear plants. If the authority decides that a certain reactor is unsafe to operate, who should bear the cost of decommissioning? Utilities set aside fixed money every year in a reserve fund for decommissioning, assuming a 40-year life for a reactor. If a reactor has to be scrapped after 20 years, the fund will only have half the necessary money. The head of the Federation of Electric Power Companies, Makoto Yagi, comments on the shortfall. Utilities do have their decommissioning funds, but when a reactor has to be taken down due to government policies, cost-sharing methods should be worked out between utilities and the government. Who should pay the costs? The operators or consumers? Nuclear regulations that put safety first are facing new challenges. Mr. Kitazawa, after watching the report, I understand that it's going to take an enormous amount of money just to maintain the reactors, even after the authority decides to stop the plants from operating. Who should shoulder the maintenance costs is a difficult question. Should consumers pay, or should we alter the current framework and let someone else shoulder the costs? Well, the NRA should not be affected by whether the utility can go on operating the reactors when they come to a conclusion based on whether it's safe to restart the reactors. It cannot be helped that some reactors will have to be scrapped following the safety assessment. Still, the reactors are already there, so there is no choice but to take them down. Scrapping the reactors will cost dearly, but someone will have to shoulder the costs. The utilities and the government must collect the money they invested. In the end, the taxpayers will have to pay the bill, no matter what. The government will have to come up with a plan on how each party should shoulder the costs based on discussions at the expert panel and other means. The plan should be rational, so everyone concerned will agree to it. It is hard work that will take a long time, but the government should work on it. We should be aware that whatever we build, we should take down. You cannot help it. When scrapping reactors, we will have to face the issue of what to do with high-level radioactive waste. What role should the government and the NRA play in this process? As I said, it costs a lot of money to build a nuclear reactor, and it costs even more to scrap one. We saw that there's a shortage in the reserve fund. It costs almost $1.1 billion to take down a single reactor. This does not include the cost of disposing of high-level nuclear waste. Our children and grandchildren will have to shoulder a huge cost to safely contain the high-level waste. We have no choice but to pay for this. It is a big problem that we should tackle how to come up with a rational and approvable plan to shoulder costs. Meanwhile, the NRA will always have to remember to put safety first. It will have to protect the safety of citizens no matter what. I don't think it should care too much about cost. It should always put safety first and do its job without being affected by the voices of outsiders. It is quite difficult to come up with a quick and sensible answer, but still, we have to solve all the problems regarding the nuclear power plants now that they are built. What do you think we should put first when considering these problems? 
Nuclear power generation has so far produced a certain amount of electricity and helped make Japan a rich country. We should admit that it had some positive impact. At the same time, we should acknowledge that there is a certain cost to shoulder, and it's our duty to solve those problems produced by nuclear power generation. All Japanese people should be prepared to pay for what we did to some extent. Everyone should be prepared and look for the most rational answer to all the questions. We will have to choose what kind of energy we want. It will take decades to shift from one energy source to another, be it fossil fuel or atomic energy or renewable energy. We, the adults of this generation, should find a way to take into account the views of the next generation when we seek a long-term solution, so the children can carry on without losing their dreams. Thank you, Mr. Kitazawa.